afternoon. So this, uh, this paper, the good thing about this paper is all the co-authors are here. So if there are more questions, I'll always be rescued by the authors. Um, so this is my outline. I'll introduce the, basically talk about the background to this uh, uh, paper. And then I'll talk about the trends in poverty and growth in Malawi. And then given the trends and the, uh, in growth and poverty, you will see that actually there's a need for a reassessment of poverty in Malawi. So I will talk about the, the new methodology that we have used uh, and then discuss the results and then I will conclude. Uh, basically, the goal of this uh, paper is to re-estimate poverty lines for Malawi uh, using an improved uh, methodology. I think the details will be clear as we move along. Uh, this is, uh, so we're essentially using two data sets. Um, they are both national representative and they have very extensive consumption uh, modules. Uh, so we're using the Integrated Household Survey 2 uh, popularly known as IHS-2, and the Integrated Household Survey 3, again known as IHS-3. These are done every five years. Um, now this uh, paper is part of a project, a union-wide uh, project, uh, the Growth and uh, Poverty Project. Uh, it's been done in a number of countries, uh, and Malawi was one of the selected countries. Um, okay, so if you look at the trends in poverty for Malawi. The picture is kind of very depressing, actually. Since 1998, uh, 1998, this is the first integrated household survey, the poverty rate was about 52.4%. Uh, there has been a very little discernible change in poverty over time. The only change that we notice here is actually between 2004 and 2009, but then these, these were based, these are official figures by the way, these are based on the welfare monitoring survey which doesn't have consumption expenditure data. So this was based on imputed consumption data, right? And they, there was hope then that actually maybe poverty is declining. So it was a decline from there up to about 39%, right? And then when, when the integrated household survey three data came, after recalculating the poverty rates, we actually found that actually the poverty rate is up again. It's about 50.7%. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the IHS to 2004, there's very little change between 2004 and the 2010. Okay. Now, why would you expect a change in poverty over this period? There's been a lot happening in Malawi over this period, and this this lack of change in poverty raises a lot of uh, questions. Is it true that poverty has not changed? What, what is going on here? Okay. So just to give you a background to that, so you see why this puzzled so many, this picture has puzzled so many policy makers in Malawi. You see what, what has happened. Um, there was a massive, and the next presenter will talk about this, there was a, there was a massive uh, uh, yeah, input subsidy, which basically started in 2005, coinciding with the, uh, the first, uh, the second integrated household survey data. Its aim was basically to target smallholder farmers, and it was basically a massive uh, subsidy. It's about 74% of the agricultural budget and 16% of the national budget. So it's a, it's a massive uh, undertaking. Um, now, given the structure of the Malawian economy, you would expect this uh, massive undertaking by the government to have some impact on poverty. Why? Because most of the, poor, uh, of the poor, or most of the, most of the people in Malawi are employed in agriculture, about 80%. And the, because the, tar, the uh, subject was targeting maize, uh, and of course tobacco, maize is also contributes about 25% uh, to agriculture GDP. And the tobacco contributes about 67% uh, of the export revenues. So it's a major export earner. So given this, in the light of this, uh, uh, Picture, you would expect that actually poverty should have declined. The, with the input subsidy, as the next presenter will show, actually, we, we, Malawi experienced almost double uh, an increase in the, in, in, the use of, in the yield of maize, doubled actually over the same period. And 
uh, economic growth was about 7% over the same period. So this is a massive uh, increase in economic growth. It was even a massive increase in, in agriculture uh, growth. Actually, agriculture GDP grew by about, 15, uh, about 16% over the same period. And agriculture, like we, as we've shown earlier, agriculture is a major component of uh, the, the economy. So any growth, any movement in the agriculture sector will affect the overall economic uh, uh, picture. So 16% increase in agriculture gro uh, growth led to higher levels of uh, growth uh, in Malawi. Actually, it was 8%. eight the economic growth was 8%, the highest uh, in 2008, which was, uh, at some point, Malawi was, ranked, uh, was one of the fastest growing uh, economies. Always we have uh, kind of gone down a little bit. So it is in the light of this background that you compare with this picture, this puzzle. Why is poverty not declining man, with all these massive uh, or impressive figures? Okay, so, and that's where this is the motivation of this, uh, essentially, this study, just to re-evaluate the poverty measures to come up with the new poverty lines. Actually. So what do we do? Well, we use a new a refined method, which is based on the cost of basic needs approach, the standard cost of basic needs approach, which is exactly what the official uh, uh, measures are based on, but we, we try to refine it. How do we do that? There are five changes that we make to the official uh, measurement of poverty. One is that we calculate region-specific poverty lines. In the official um, analysis, it's just one national poverty line. Uh, and in, in coming up with the food poverty lines, because you're using calories, and these will vary with your age, uh, your gender, whether you're pregnant, and all that stuff, we take into account these, the age, the gender, and the poverty rates. In the official analysis, they only focus on the age. They don't take into account the gender differences. They don't take into account pregnancy differences. So that's another dimension that we in, uh, introduce. Again, we allow for the fact that the consumption bundle will change over time, right? And you also follow Ravalio in 2009 by including an iteration procedure. Again, in the official analysis, there's no iteration. Uh, and then a key part of what we're doing here is ensuring that the poverty lines are iterated consistent. Again, the official analysis is nothing like that. So it is a consistency, it is a consistent over time, and it is a consistent over, uh, across space. So just to, to say something about what the official uh, poverty figures uh, were derived, actually. So, so from 2004, what the uh, uh, National Statistics Office did was to use the standard cost of basic needs approach. Right? So that was standard, of course, minus some of the things that I've mentioned here. 2010, which is the current data set, they did not do that. All they did was to just inflate the 2004 poverty rates, uh, poverty lines, with an inflation figure, this one, 128%. Right? This inflation, this figure, was applied to both the food component and the food component. Where this number comes from, it's not clear, actually. If you look at the official uh, CPI data, you can't find it. So it's not clear, again, where this number uh, came from. Okay, so, and we'll see later actually that this number is, is significantly uh, slightly, well, slower than what we are getting from the, from the data set. Okay, so I will spend a bit of time talking about this idea of iterative data consistency. Uh, well, some of the things that I've, we've said we've changed are uh, kind of standard. But this, this is based on uh, a paper by uh, Antti and Chimla, uh, Simla, 2010. I think there was a presentation yesterday on this paper, so maybe some of you have seen what the methodology is all about. But so it, the idea here is that to say, okay, we utility can be utility can be assumed to be stable or constant, but the cost of getting that level of utility will be changing over time, right? So, so what the NSO is doing is to assume that the, um, as you move over time, the the, the cost the cost of uh, attaining that utility, uh, even though it has changed. They will just multiply by the, the cost, the 128%, one, one which doesn't solve our problem. The problem is that you're saying utility is the same, but the cost of attaining that utility maybe has changed over time. So what we do in this, in this paper is to say, okay, well, so this, we're doing this over time and across space. So the same, the same bundle or a bundle can, can have this different cost uh, across space, across regions, or over time. 
So what we're doing in this paper is to then say, okay, over the two periods, 2004 and 2005, has this changed? Or over space, has it changed? Now, how do, you know, how do we do that? Well, we conduct some reviewed preference tests. These are based on um, uh, maximum entropy estimation. It's discussed in the paper of Andre, uh, uh, Simla and Andre. Um, so we conduct these tests. Based on the tests, we probably, it's actually, we found, actually, for, for, for some of the poverty bundles, we found that, actually, they failed the reviewed preference tests. Now, condition on failing the reviewed preference tests, you must adjust the bundles, right? So most of, actually, most of the bundles, quite a number of them failed the, the, the test. So we had to re adjust the bundles, and that's the final thing that you do. You adjust the bundles. After adjusting the bundles, what you end up getting will be the poverty lines, food poverty lines that are utility consistent. Right, essentially, without going into the technical de details. That's essentially what we did in the paper. It involves some uh, usage of gums and all that stuff. But, yeah. So, after doing that, I will show you a picture of what we get compared to the official figures. Okay? Now, notice here that there are gaps here. Why? Because the official figure is just a national... Uh, these are poverty lines per person per day. So, there's nothing on rural, um, uh, for all the rural areas, because it's just one poverty line. Uh, but what we're getting, like I said, we're calculating poverty lines for each one of these areas in our study. So what you see here actually is the, uh, the, fo the food component is about 27. For the official analysis, it's about 27, well, 28 quacha, right? Just a little in terms of dollars, actually. And then that's 2004. If you move to 2010, it's, of course it goes up as we'd expect. Uh, but the food, the non food component, because our poverty line was just a sum of the food component and the non food component, where we get the total, for, uh, total poverty line, which is official figure here. You see that actually our figure is slightly lower than the official figure, right? If you look at the national uh, level. Um, again, if you move to 2010, I see that the national figure is slightly higher. The national poverty line is higher than the official figure. Of course, I mean, this is just a reflection of the fact that there is substitution over time and all that stuff. Now, if you look at the, uh, I've discussed this, uh, if you look at the food poverty line, the food poverty line for the, two, the food poverty line for the two periods, it's fairly similar compared to the official uh, uh, figures. They're fairly similar. Right. The difference comes in when you move on to the non-food component. The non-food component for 2004 is fairly similar. The difference will be noticeable in 2010-2011, which is again a reflection of the fact that things have changed uh, over time. Uh, actually, if you then move to the inflation, inflation for the poor, uh, we find that actually the food inflation is significantly lower than the, the one that, that was calculated by the statistics office. Uh, overall, the national inflation for the poor is the, so the national inflation for the poor, which is this, is slightly lower than, well, significantly lower than the official inflation rate, which was used to adjust the poverty, uh, the poverty lines. So they overestimated inflation by adjusting by this. Our own figure that we're getting from the data set is this one. Uh, we, we, in the paper, we tried to figure out what is going on here. Is it, is it the inflation component of it? Is it the two issues that are probably driving this? That the, there's this land food component, which is lower, uh, and then the issue of using higher prices for, in the official analysis. We, we discussed in more detail this, uh, these issues in the paper. So it's, it's just based on the non-food component. So what we are doing is to divide. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. We have unit values, not prices, but unit values, where we're dividing the quantity, uh, the amount, the total expenditure by the amount purchased. Not necessarily the prices, but unit values. Yes?
not prices and prices going to the market and getting the prices. We're just calculating the what I would call unit values from from the, the data. Okay. Um, so, and and the, the other issue that we 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 said here is actually, we, you, as I've already mentioned, there, the, it's a non-food component which has uh, which is showing a market change in in our results. But the non-food component, whatever, if you look at 2010, 2011, it's significantly lower than the official uh, official figures. And actually, we see that actually that's it, that's one of the drivers of this change in the poverty results that we see later. Uh, so we said, okay, could this be an artifact of the de uh, our choice of the poverty line? So we did some robust test analysis. We tried different uh, non-food components. Uh, actually, what we're finding actually doesn't matter. For 2010, the non-food component is, is always lower than uh, the official uh, non-food component. So it's, it's, it's a robust uh, finding. It's not something that is, sens that is sensitive to choice of poverty line. Okay. Okay, now, given these poverty lines that I've just seen, so we calculated new poverty uh, figures, the poverty headcounts. We're simply focusing here on poverty headcounts. We don't talk about poverty gap and poverty severity, but we can easily do that. But for, for purposes of this presentation, I'll just talk about the poverty headcounts. Uh, actually, what you see now is that these are the official, fig, uh, official poverty headcounts, and these are our, our headcounts, uh, so for 2004 and then 2010. You see, actually, we have the differences here calculated. Uh, for, for, the official, for the official figures, it shows that actually poverty declined by 1.7 uh, percentage points, a very insignificant, uh, very insignificant change. When we do our analysis, we show that actually the decline is minus uh, about 8.2 percentage points, a much, much bigger decline in poverty. Right? Remember what we said earlier that we were talking about this massive intervention in, our, in the agriculture sector with the input subsidy. So this kind of, it's kind of consistent with what we'd expect in the light of what, what was happening. Uh, again, what, what is of more interest here is, if you look at the rural poverty figures, the rural poverty figures, where the most of the intervention in the agriculture sector is uh, uh, targeted, yes. um, we'll find actually the official figures show that actually in the rural areas, poverty actually increased, increased marginally. Right? Our analysis shows that actually for all the rural areas, north, center, and south, poverty actually uh, went down. Right? Again, which is consistent with what you would expect given the intervention uh, uh, that we have talked about. So there are two things here. We're showing that actually poverty has gone down, and the decline, the magnitude of the decline is much, much bigger than the official uh, magnitudes. Okay? Uh, The other thing that we did was to say, okay, well, I mean, can we just fix the bundle, the 2004 bundle, 2004, 2005 bundle, apply that to 2010 and see what happens? Because that's what essentially what the, uh, the official uh, figures are based on. If you do that, and this is the last column, you are using a fixed bundle for 2004. What, what do you get? Well, the figures are slightly similar to what you get from the official analysis. Right? So essentially, again, we have another thing which is which tells us what is driving the results here. It's the fact that the official analysis assumes that the bundle is the same over time. Our analysis is just saying, okay, the bundle, may be, these things may be changing over time. And because they are changing over time, the results will also change. So there are two things here that are driving our essential results. Uh, it's this thing that we have, we have, um, the land food component has gone down. And the fact that the... Uh, uh, and the fact that uh, sorry, the land food component is going down consistently in 2010, uh, and the bundle, and the bundle, if you're using a fixed bundle, 
the results will be similar to the official figures. So using a flexible bundle, using a flexible bundle actually leads to the differences in the results between our, our, our results and the official results. So are these results robust to choice of poverty line? Actually, you see that actually if you plot the poverty headcounts over for all different poverty lines that you choose, you see that actually there's a, a, a change, uh, there's a decline in poverty, whatever poverty line you choose. And these are mostly significant using the 95% uh, confidence interval bands there. Uh, quickly, I'll just conclude there, say, okay, well, I mean, there are two things that are driving the results here. Um, it could be, as I've just mentioned, the poverty decline that we're seeing here is driven by the shift in the food component, uh, or it's partly driven by the fact that we have full, lower food inflation that we've estimated here. Now, can we say that the fist the food uh, agriculture input subsidy was uh, effective? Maybe. Because so this is kind of consistent with what most people expected, that poverty should have declined, given that it was targeting the agriculture sector, and most of the agriculture sector is basically rural. So our results are kind of consistent with what most people expected. Thank you. <laughs>